Hi, I'm Dr. Ramakrishna Prasad, a US board certified family medicine specialist and an HIV AIDS specialist. I serve as a senior consultant uh, and HIV specialist at PCMH Restore Health, uh, of which I'm also the executive director. The question that has been asked to me is, what is pre-exposure prophylaxis for HIV? And then what is post-exposure prophylaxis for HIV? These are very important questions. Let's talk about each of these one by one. <clears throat> Whenever someone is at risk of acquiring HIV infection, for example, say you were in a relationship where you were HIV negative, but your partner was HIV positive, or you were someone um, in a, uh, uh, who, were at, who was at risk of either having multiple sexual partners or at risk of acquiring HIV infection from people who, who were unknown to you. This is a situation where you might benefit from what is called pre-exposure prophylaxis. As a part of pre-exposure prophylaxis, you start taking certain HIV medications even before you get infected so that you may prevent HIV infection in the first place. Um, this is a fairly revolutionary idea which uh, has been available only for the last four to five years. And uh, one must keep in mind that uh, there's a method to prescribing pre-exposure prophylaxis which involves detailed counseling wherein a, a person's risk profile, risk factors need to be understood. One also needs to make sure that the person has not been already infected because starting these medications in someone who might already be infected puts them at risk of developing resistance. <clears throat> Furthermore, because this involves taking a daily pill, as of now, the CDC in the United States only uh, uh, recommends the use of a daily medication for pre-exposure prophylaxis. Um, uh, as, as a person or a patient, one needs to be ready for this and to understand the different risks and benefits that accrue from starting pre-exposure prophylaxis. Finally, it is important to realize that PrEP is one of the strategies for HIV prevention and, these, and this strategy must go hand in hand with other proven uh, preventive measures such as condoms or reducing your uh, or other ways of reducing your um, risk of HIV acquisition. If you're interested in PrEP, um, my advice would, to you would be to go speak with an HIV specialist who has experience in this uh, to discuss the risks and uh, benefits and then take an informed decision. The second part of the question was, what is post-exposure prophylaxis? This is something I urge all of you, everyone um, should be aware of post-exposure prophylaxis against HIV. <clears throat> What post-exposure prophylaxis for HIV refers to is following an exposure. For example, if you had unprotected sex with someone and you're concerned that you might have uh, been exposed to HIV, uh, the HIV virus, or uh, say you were a healthcare professional or you went to a hospital and you had a needle stick injury, or there was a splash of blood or fluids from a patient into your eye, and you want, to, you want to know what can I do at this time to reduce my risk or prevent myself from getting HIV infection. That is when post-exposure prophylaxis comes into play. <clears throat> post-exposure prophylaxis involves giving a combination of typically three medications against HIV um, within a period of 72 hours. Once again, the sooner after exposure you start um, post-exposure prophylaxis medications, the better. But the window of opportunity is very time sensitive and one needs to start within 72 hours. Then one dramatically reduces one's risk of acquiring HIV infection even after an exposure. <clears throat> A few things need to be kept in mind. Number one <clears throat> is that uh, before starting post-exposure prophylaxis, one needs to make sure that the, that the person is not already infected. So there's a baseline HIV test that needs to be done. Secondly, 
This is also an opportunity to test for other blood-borne pathogens such as hepatitis B and hepatitis C. <clears throat> and once these medications are started, it's important to know what kind of side effects to expect. The typical duration of post-exposure prophylaxis is 28 days. Uh, the most commonly prescribed combinations uh, all over the world today involve a medication called tenofovir, another medication called emtricitabine, and a medication called raltegravir or dolutegravir. Of course, other combinations are also uh, possible uh, to use. There are certain medications which are best avoided. Once again, many of these details are best uh, discussed and this decision taken with uh, a qualified and experienced HIV specialist. The only thing I would urge you, and I would urge you also to share this information with uh, friends and family and others uh, who, who uh, will benefit from this, is that if there is an exposure, please act fast because the window of opportunity is only 72 hours. And uh, uh, a final comment is post-exposure prophylaxis is very effective. And with timely institution of post-exposure prophylaxis, there are very few cases of HIV transmission that are known in the world. So once again, if you've been exposed, act fast. The window of opportunity is only 72 hours. The sooner you start post-exposure prophylaxis, the better for you. Thank you.